In the previous episode, we explored some of Blazorplate's capabilities that enable the system administrators to create accounts on behalf of other users, manage roles, grant permissions to a role, and assign a role to a specific user. In this episode, we will explore the client-side and the server-side authorization techniques that are used in Blazorplate to prevent unauthorized users from accessing the restricted resources within the system. Both techniques can be used together in your application to gain better security and usability. So let's start examining these techniques. First of all, I want to introduce you to some demo users with varying permissions. John Smith is a full privileged user who has full access privilege throughout the entire applicant's module. Mandy Moore is a read-only user who is permitted only to view the applicant's profiles. Now I'm gonna log out, then log back in as John Smith to perform a security test to examine if he is allowed to use all options in the applicant module according to his permissions. From the proof of concept section, I'm gonna use the client-side authorization module to evaluate the permissions granted to John Smith. As you can see, I can view the whole list of applicants and view the details of any applicant profile. In addition, I can edit any applicant profile. I can delete any applicant profile too. As we saw, John Smith is allowed to perform any action in the applicant's module according to the permissions granted to him. Now I'm going to repeat the same steps with Mandy Moore to examine her limited permissions in the applicant's module. As you can see, she is only allowed to view the whole list of applicants and their profiles according to the permissions granted to her. Notice that the Create, Update, and Delete buttons are hidden from this page. This is because a conditional statement was added to this page to show and hide these buttons based on the user's permissions. This is what we call client-side authorization, where the client application is responsible for checking whether the user has sufficient permissions to access a specific resource or not. Using client-side authorization alone is not recommended because there will be a good chance that one of the front-end developers uses some risky coding practices. These risky coding practices will significantly increase the likelihood of errors that would allow unintended access to some restricted resource. For this particular scenario, Blazorplate utilizes the server-side authorization technique as a second line of defense to prevent unauthorized users from accessing restricted areas within the system. As we can deduce from the name of this technique, server-side authorization takes place on the server side, where every single request that comes from the client's applications is validated dynamically against the API's endpoints using the dynamic authorization method. I will explore this innovative method later in this series. Now let's examine the server-side authorization technique using the server-side authorization example, which can be found in the proof of concept section. I'm going to use this example to evaluate Mandy Moore's permissions by sending some requests to the applicant's API endpoints. Notice that the Create, Update and Delete buttons are visible to me even though I only have read-only permissions. Let's see what will happen if I try to edit an applicant profile. As you can see, the server responds with a message indicating that I'm not allowed to call the Update Applicant endpoint. Also, I'll get the same response when deleting an applicant. Using server-side authorization alone is also not recommended because it adds some extra cost in terms of performance, where the client app should always pass the request to the server to be validated before consuming the requested resource. So the best way to gain maximum security and performance measures is to use client-side authorization in conjunction with server-side authorization. So that if the client-side authorization fails for some reason, the server-side authorization will do the job. Thank you for watching.